One of the newest benchmarks we've been doing lately pertains to live streaming while gaming. It's a new type of CPU test where we eliminate any type of GPU support in the form of encoding and rely entirely on H.264 encoding through OBS, leaning on the CPU. We haven't yet conducted this for a low or mid-range CPU. We've only looked at the i7s, the i9s, and then the R7s. Today we're looking at the Intel i5-8400 Coffee Lake CPU matched against the R5-1500X CPU. This is a 6-core, six 6-thread six chip versus a 4-core, 8-thread CPU with a lower frequency, so it should make for a good pairing. Before getting to that, this video is brought to you by Synergy, the software that lets you share a keyboard and mouse between multiple systems. If you have limited desk space and multiple computers to command, Synergy removes the need for separate peripherals or a KVM and works as over-the-network software. Use our link below to get 50% off the home or pro version with SSL. Both conducting and understanding stream benchmarks is more difficult than the usual process of conducting and understanding just standalone game benchmarks. With streaming, we have a few different ends of the spectrum to look at. On one half, you have the streamer experience, that would be the person playing the game. What do they see from their game in terms of frame rate and frame latency or frame pacing? And then you have the viewer experience on YouTube or Twitch or whatever it may be. For our testing, we're presently using YouTube that we have used Twitch in the past. But right now, we're testing with 1080p 64 hour streamed output and we switch around between different H.264 encoding presets depending on how the test is going. Faster has been our go-to preset thus far because when we conducted a survey of you guys earlier this year, we found that most of those in the audience who do stream use either fast or very fast, and so we picked the middle and went with faster. Today we're going to be doing a bit of faster, but also we'll be leaning on super fast in the H.264 preset, and for those of you not familiar with this, basically it goes down in terms of encoding quality versus speed to encode. So when you push a frame from the CPU out to the stream, it has to be encoded, and the speed of that encoding depends on the H.264 preset, which you choose as a user based on how fast your processor or your GPU acceleration may be. At the very lowest end of quality, but the fastest end in terms of getting the frames out is ultra fast, then super fast, and then I believe very fast, faster, fast, and uh, medium, and then some slower ones, which we don't really get into because once you get down to medium and below, it enters into placebo quality territory where something like an i9 or a Threadripper CPU might be able to handle it, but it kind of gets questionable whether you can see that quality as a user through a stream, though perhaps you could notice it if you're doing something like handbrake encoding or something like that where you're ripping transcoding or encoding videos, not just putting them out to YouTube where the quality will eventually be compressed at some level anyway. So that's what we're going through today. Uh, there's a lot more to this. You can check the article linked in the description below if you want to read more about the testing approach. Uh, it does get complicated, but we've really only listed the critical parts that you need to know to keep it simple as far as it can be anyway. And ultimately with streaming, you can use it as a synthetic test, but in terms of the received output to the stream, there's only so good that it can get because you can't push more than 100% of the encoding target, which is 60 FPS or 1080p 60. And of course, bear in mind that all of these CPU numbers will look better if you step down to 720p 60 if, for example, you are bottlenecked on your upload data rate through your ISP rather than bottlenecked by the CPU. Uh, but once you get into that territory, basically everything encodes at 100% for the most part with at least super fast, if not faster. So that kind of gets to be a pointless test because you can't, there's, there's no measurement beyond 100% encoded frames. It just stops because that's effectively a perfect output at that point. Let's get started with Dirt Rally. We'll move on to Dota in a bit. We recently added Dota and have done some work with CSGO recently. But Dirt Rally remains our go-to for stream tests. It's not that a lot of people are streaming it, it's just that the game is easy to work with and provides a trustworthy baseline that's easy to replicate, which is what you want for your baseline. At 1080p 60 ultra settings and advanced blending, and a 1080p output to YouTube streamed with a 10 megabit per second bitrate, and again faster for the preset, we get the results shown here from OBS. 
The i5-8400 stock CPU only delivers about 31% of its frames, showing that this workload is simply too difficult for the 6-core to handle. The R5-1500X, priced equivalently at $190 for each CPU, only delivers 7.7% of its frames. We're not overclocking today, but it is something to consider for the future. We have to drop from the faster H.264 profile to better accommodate these low-end CPUs, as our testing thus far has only dealt with i7s, R7s, X299, or X399 CPUs, and even overclocking won't help either of them at this point. They're just too slow. And too thread limited, to be fair. That's the bigger aspect here, as threads matter when you're dealing with encoding and gaming. Because this is clearly not usable as a streamed output, let's just look at it as a synthetic test for the starter. Even with these dismally low encoded frame counts of 31% on the 8400 and 7.7% on the 1500X, which means we're dropping about 69 and 92% of frames respectively, we can still look at the frame delivery latencies. The R5-1500X manages to deliver 73% of its admittedly very low frame count within a 16.7 millisecond ideal window. The 8400 delivers about 56% of its frames in that same 16.7 millisecond window. We can't make much of this just yet, but it is something to keep in mind for the next few charts. The 8400 is clearly delivering significantly more frames than the 1500X, though both are completely unusable for this configuration, but the 1500X delivers its lower frame count more consistently. Out of desperation and before dropping quality, we switched to high priority for OBS. This previously worked to help save the i7-7700K from general uselessness in a similar test, so it might help here. We do end up delivering 100% of frames from the i5-8400 when switching OBS to high priority, but there's a hit to player side or streamer side performance. We'll look at that momentarily after this chart. The 1500X manages now to deliver 61% of its frames, dropping about 38.7%. Still somewhat unusable, but also improved. We can also see that, again, the 1500X manages to deliver more in the plus or minus 2% window of 16.7 milliseconds, but it's dropping so many more frames that it's still a poor match for this streaming configuration. It's just too much of a workload. The player side FPS chart will help better reveal whether the higher priority OBS workload murders the ability to play and enjoy the game. As we talked about in our R7-1700 and i7-7700K streaming benchmarks previously, it's possible to deliver 100% of frames and still have an awful experience. If you're only able to render, for example, 30 FPS or below on the player side, then you obviously have a lot fewer frames available to encode to stream than with a 60 plus FPS render output. As a refresher, these charts consist of two halves. We've just gone through some of the OBS numbers for the streaming output. The next half is the streamer view, the game performance, and that consists of FPS charts and make up the other half of the equation. There are two FPS numbers per CPU at a minimum. There's baseline performance, which is performance without streaming and only gaming, and then there's streams performance. There might be in some cases a third option, which is high priority or some affinity performance, but that's less of a concern here. Baseline FPS for, again, dirt rally still. The i5-8400 manages 109 FPS average, 86 1% lows, and 78 0.1% lows. We're right up against the limits here. The R5-1500X performs effectively the same with this video card and with these settings. This makes the two roughly tied pre-stream. Note that the 8400 and 1500X are not tied in gaming benchmarks, but this is quite a bit different than those. We'll publish the full review with those gaming benchmarks shortly hereafter. In the meantime though, they're equal pre-stream. During the stream, the i5-8400 outputs 107 FPS average, 81 1% lows, and 34 FPS 0.1% lows. It has lost effectively 0% of its performance, but it's also failing to output any frames to stream. If you remember correctly from the previous chart, the 8400 was only successfully encoding 31% of its frames, with the 1500X encoding 8% of its frames. This is interesting because the 8400 actually gives the streamer a great experience, but the viewers get an unwatchable one. The R5-1500X drops more of its frames, falling to 97 FPS average, but is still spending more resources than necessary on streamer gameplay and not enough resources on the encoding. Changing to high priority for each CPU means we lose in streamer side FPS, but we improve encoded frame output. The i5-8400 is now giving the player a 51 FPS average, with lows somewhat dismal at 11 FPS 1% and 7 FPS 0.1%. 
This is effectively unplayable, but we do manage to deliver 100% of the frames. To be fair, there aren't that many frames to deliver anymore because at this point it's just not really usable. The R5 1500X with high priority does even worse at 33 FPS average and with 61% of frames delivered, so it doesn't even hit 100%. What you're seeing now is some of the streamed outputs from those tests. We'll let this play side by side for a moment while I talk through the next section. Just to reiterate, this test has traditionally been a mainstay for us. In our limited time with these new streaming benchmarks, Dirt Rally has proved adequate for most testing and gives us an easy, replicable output. With these two CPUs, it's just too much work though. They can't handle it, so we'll have to drop down to an easier setting for mid-range CPUs, like encoding with super fast instead of faster. Let's take a look at super fast versus faster for video quality, but we'll hold the CPU unveil for a moment. For this particular game, super fast doesn't particularly drop our visual quality in a noticeable way, of course, ignoring the fact that faster is just stuttering like crazy. By the time it gets to YouTube, they really kind of look the same, at least for this game. The actual important part is that super fast allows us to output to an actual stream rather than a choppy slideshow and outweighs any minor quality differences you could perceive. Here's the chart for Dirt Rally with super fast. With all the same settings except for H.264 encoding preset, which is again, super fast now, we're able to encode 100% of frames at 60 FPS to the YouTube stream. The R5 1500X and i5 8400 both drop 0% of frames. Looking at frame latencies, we see that the R5 1500X encodes 53.85% of its frames within the ideal 16.7 millisecond window, which is a 60 FPS refresh. If you were to divide 1000 milliseconds by 60 FPS, you'd get that. And then it's also got 17.7% of its frames delivering faster than 16.7 milliseconds, 28.5% delivering slower. Being that faster is valueless here, you really just want consistency, sort of like VR gaming. It doesn't matter if you're faster or slower, just be there at the right time. As for the i5-8400, 51.3% of its frames are encoded within that 16.7 millisecond window, with 21% faster and 27.5% slower. Both CPUs manage to achieve a 100% frame encode marker to their credit, but they also achieve that mark more chaotically. There is minimal precision between each. The 51% versus 54-ish percent numbers are so close that they're more or less equal, especially since we don't run as many test passes with streaming as we do with these shorter game tests. The good news is that we are actually able to stream this game successfully now just with a lower quality output. Let's take a look at streamer side FPS and experience because the two are pretty close so far. The baseline performance remains the same as previously, of course. So we're looking at numbers of roughly 109 FPS average for each CPU against the limits. The R5 1500X drops to 99 FPS average, 72 FPS 1% low, and 29 FPS 0.1% lows. The four core eight thread R5 CPU is therefore dropping about 10% in streamer side performance versus baseline in order to maintain a fluid output stream but we're still within playable territory, well within it. The i5-8400, meanwhile, manages to keep nearly all of its original performance because the super fast encoding and gameplay aren't generating enough work to fully engage and trip up the CPU, as the previous test did. It's still a heavy workload, but it's not nearly as heavy. The low frame rates are around where the 1500X is, with a 0.1% frame latency converting to 32 FPS. This fits the profile we've created for all CPUs when streaming on the host system. We lose consistency in low-end frame latencies by initiating a stream, which means that ultra-competitive players in games like CSGO or Dota 2 may be more sensitive to the loss. Using an external capture system would remove this concern, but subjectively speaking, we don't really notice the difference too often with this game. When dropping to super fast from faster, both CPUs are able to keep up with both encoding workloads and gaming workloads. The rise in the CPU drops about 10% of its baseline FPS to accommodate the stream, while the Intel CPU manages to hang on and is capped elsewhere. We'll explore this in the Dota test. Neither is outright superior to the other in streaming output when we drop to this quality setting. Before Dota 2, here's a look at power consumption during the stream benchmarking. Each CPU is represented by baseline power consumption when gaming and not streaming, then further streamed power consumption after that. These power metrics are taken at EPS 12 volt rails, not at the wall, so they are measuring 12 volt power to the CPU. The Intel i5-8400 CPU consumes about 29 to 31 watts when gaming only, with the 1500X at about 40 to 42 watts, ignoring one spike. Streaming, the CPUs land at 52 to 54 watts with the i5-8400 when pushing dirt and a 10 megabit per second stream, with the R5-1500X pulling 64 to 66 watts for the same workload. Let's move on to Dota 2. 
using the same unplayable settings that we tested for Dirt Rally, capturing Dota 2 at 10 megabits per second with a 1080p 60 output and faster preset made the stream completely unwatchable. We dropped about 98% of frames on both the i5 and the R5, leaving us with fewer than 3% of frames encoded to the stream successfully. Switching to high priority resolved this for each CPU, giving us a full 100% encoding rate, but we got lower frames in game. This is revealed when looking at the FPS chart now. The stock 8400 and stock 1500X both have significantly higher frame rates when no process is given priority, but the stream is useless, so they have functionally failed the test. The 8400 has a baseline performance ceiling of 163 FPS average with 82 and 40 FPS lows. The 1500X baseline is 108 FPS average with lows at 53 and 27. Moving to the high prioritization, the 8400 manages a 70 FPS average player side throughput, but introduces noticeable frame latency that computes 12 FPS 0.1% lows. It's loosely playable and the stream is great, but it's just frustrating enough to demand better performance. You'd want to drop encoding settings a bit still. The R5 1500X, meanwhile, just can't keep up. At 28 FPS average and lows sub 10 FPS, it's not playable, despite the stream encoding all of the limited frames. Moving to super fast should be more realistic. Streaming with this version of encoding, we're able to output 100% of the frames from both the i5 8400 and R5 1500X, making them functionally equivalent as far as the stream viewer is concerned. That said, the R5 1500X does manage one noteworthy feat, of its frames delivered, the CPU keeps 94.6% of them within plus or minus 2% of 16.7 milliseconds, whereas the i5-8400 is closer to 65%. This follows previous trends, though they were less noticeable. We don't yet have enough data to fully draw conclusions, but it may be that when the Ryzen CPU is under less duress and strain for frequency demand, its additional threads are assisting in frame pacing. That's something that the i5 lacks in this case but it does make up for it in speed and gaming instances. Looking at FPS, the i5-8400 delivers a decisive victory here. It manages a 59% lead over the R5 streaming test. We're at 135 FPS average versus 85 FPS average. Part of this difference contributes to the i5's more chaotic frame pacing, and just like with the 7700K, you'd be best off doing some manual tuning on the CPU to get the most out of it. We'd recommend some tuning of affinities on the CPU threads. Ryzen still manages reasonably well at 85 FPS average while delivering 100% of the frames to the stream, but the i5 is also capable of this task. The difference is that the i5 has less precision, and you really should be manually tuning it a bit to compete with the Ryzen CPU more directly. The Ryzen CPU seems to be able to handle frame pacing a bit better out of the box. As for power consumption, the spacing still favors Intel. The i5-8400 is pushing about 4 to 4.1 amps, with the R5-1500X pushing about 4.8 amps. So that's it for our R5 and I5 streaming benchmark. There's a lot more to do with this. Streaming is highly complex. There are a lot of aspects we don't or can't test. There are a lot of other games to test. And this video is dense enough as it is. It's hard enough to run these tests as it is. So uh, we're working on doing more of these. Obviously we keep adding them and iterating on them. But just keep in mind that this isn't fully definitive. So while we can draw conclusions for these settings with these games as to which CPU is better at these particular settings and games, it's not enough data to draw conclusions across the board because just looking at Dirt and Dota alone, it's obvious that the two CPUs kind of trade a little bit in performance depending on which game it is. And we've seen this in the past with the i7s, the R7s, Threadripper, and i9s and things like that. So anyway, that's the data for now. Take it for what it is, it's basically still in kind of, it, it's a test, it's methodological, we've advanced it into the reviews at this point, so it's good data that we trust, uh, but we're still learning as far as what settings make the most sense for these types of tests. Super fast appears to be what's basically necessary for the i5s and r5s, faster is just too hard for them to do. Uh, as far as how visible that quality difference is, we're still figuring that out, but it looks like both the i5 and r5 can handle with super fast streaming. It's just that the i5 in some cases does a bit better, the r5 in other cases does a bit better between frame pacing and frame encoding, and then the i5 is just pretty much always ahead in terms of raw FPS, particularly when carrying a stream simultaneously, sometimes massively, sometimes not as much. So lots to consider. Ideally, you don't use either of these for your stream, but you could make it work if you had to. 
at least a little bit more than some of the previous CPUs we've tested. It's just you really start tanking the quality as you move down into these lower core count chips particularly. So as always, thank you for watching. You can go to patreon.com slash gamers nexus. That's where you can help us out directly or join our Discord community. And you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one or hopefully soon more hats like that one. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.